Hey everyone, welcome back to Learn With Me. I'm Deborah Hansen, and today we are going to look at the key terms for 2.7, forgetting and other memory challenges in AP Psychology. So this is again from the new curriculum that they've put out, the College Board have put out, and these are the key terms that go for this particular unit. If you want to hear more about the actual CED question, which we're going to talk about in a second, and more information about that, I have a separate video where I go through just that information. This is simply the definition and real life example. So if you find these videos helpful, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. And leave me comments. I, I answer everyone who actually leaves me a comment. I really appreciate it to see who's watching them. And again, if you have suggestions for other videos that you'd like to see or that you would find helpful to make your AP psychology journey um, better, please let me know and I can try and see if I can make those. Okay, so we are going to start with, first of all, looking at the CED question, which we always do because we know that that's where the College Board's getting the uh, questions for the AP exam from. So let's start with this one. For 2.7, explain possible reasons why memory failure or errors may occur. And we talked about the, the key terms, and they were embedded in the last video, but now we're just going to go through each of these key terms with the definition and real-life example. Let's start with the forgetting curve. So the forgetting curve is a graphical representation that shows how information is lost over time if not reviewed or reinforced. It illustrates the decline of memory retention, highlighted, highlighting that we forget information rapidly after learning it and then more slowly over time. So if you learn a new language today, you might forget 50% of what you learned by tomorrow if you don't review it. A week later, you might only remember 20% of the original information without reinforcing. So remember to write these either on your flashcards or if you keep them in your notebook, whatever you do, writing them really does make a difference. And then you can find uh, like on on YouTube, I know, or not on YouTube, but in the internet, you can find, you know, like the Quizlets and things like that to help you practice, or you have your flashcards. It's super important to know the terminology in AP Psych so that you can apply it on test day in your FRQs and even your MCQs. When you have those options, you know, when you're checking and you're saying, okay, what does that mean? You have to know what that means. Okay. Here we go. So then we have proactive interference. Proactive interference occurs when old information hinders the ability to remember new information. So if you've always parked your car in a specific spot at work and you start parking in a new spot, you might keep walking to the old spot out of habit, forgetting where you parked your car today. Retroactive interference. Retroactive interference happens when new information makes it difficult to recall older information. So after learning a new phone number, you may struggle to remember your old phone number because the new one has interfered with your memory of the old one. Pretty cool. Tip of the tongue phenomenon. The tip of the tongue phenomenon is when you are temporarily unable to recall a word or name, even though you feel you know it and it's just out of reach, hence the tip of the tongue. You're trying to remember the name of an actor in a movie, and you can picture them so clearly, but you just can't recall their name at that moment, even though you feel it's right at the tip of your tongue. Happens to me all the time. Psychological repression. Psychological repression is a defense mechanism where the mind unconsciously pushes away distressing or unwanted thoughts, memories, or feelings from conscious awareness. So for example, a person who experienced a traumatic event in childhood may not remember the event at all, as their mind has repressed the memory to protect them from emotional distress. Misinformation effect. The misinformation effect occurs when a person's memory of an event is altered by misleading information presented after the event. So if a witness to a car accident is later asked, how fast were the cars going when they smashed into each other? They might recall the cars going faster than they actually were because the word smashed suggests a severe impact. Source amnesia. Source amnesia is the inability to remember where, when, or how you learn specific information while still retaining the factual knowledge itself. You remember that eating carrots is good for your food, sorry, good for your eyesight, but you can't recall where or from whom you first heard this information. Now, probably your grandmother or your mother, but anyway, who knows? <laughs> My mom was always saying, eat your carrots, it'll make your eyes better. And here I am wearing glasses. So constructive memory. Constructive memory refers to the process of creating memories by piecing together bits of information, often influenced by expectations, knowledge, or imagination, which can sometimes lead to inaccurate or false memories. Here's the example. You recall a childhood birthday party with vivid details of a clown, but later found out there was never a clown at your party. Your mind filled in the details based on similar events or stories you've heard. 
Okay, so now what we're going to do is I'm just going to go through the words. I'm just going to say the word, and I'm going to ask you to give me the definition and the example. Okay, try not to use, use your notes if you can, but if you have to for now, that's fine because we are trying to encode these words in our brain, right? And practice makes perfect. Okay, the forgetting curve. What is the definition? What is the example? And you can pause the video to do that. Proactive interference. I need the definition and an example. Retroactive interference. A definition and an example. And if you have a different one from what I said, that's great. I mean, that's fine. As long as you understand the term. Tip of the tongue phenomenon. Definition, example. And there are probably many examples of this one. Psychological repression. Misinformation effect. Source amnesia. Constructive memory. And that's all I have for 2.7. Those are all the key terms that you need to know. I'm sure there's more, but these are the most important ones. And these are the ones that the college board actually mentioned in 2.7 of their CED, of the course exam description booklet. So that's what we're going to look at for now. But of course, you know that a lot of these words will come up in other, unit, in other sections of this unit, and then you just need to know them for the exam. Hopefully you found this helpful. Please leave me a message if you did. Subscribe if you really like it. Thank you so much. I'll like a like too. Um, hope to see you next time. Have a great day. See ya.